It's not about the book. It's not about the principles in the book. It's about doing the work to apply what's going on in that book to your life. If you're not doing anything, if you're sitting back reading all day, you have nothing to apply to, and it's not gonna be helpful. Let's talk briefly about business books. People feel strongly that uh, reading a bunch of business books will give you a ton of tips and tricks and an edge in business. And it's true, they help a lot. But let me tell you one thing before I even get started is that I learned more running my business for six months than I could have read by, than I could have learned by reading all of the business books in the world and studying them all and going to Harvard Business School. I'll just tell you that. I learned more operating my company for six months than I would have from any of the books on this list. And Another contrary, contrarian point around books is that so many people read them for enjoyment. They nod along. They, oh, that's a great point. Maybe they're underlining things. These books are valuable when you take the time to apply them to your life. No book is designed for you. You're not going to ever agree with everything in a book. A book is meant to be a outline of a lot of structures and a lot of things you can apply to your own life. Doing the work to apply those things to your own life and throwing out all the things that don't matter, that's the difference. It takes work. It takes thinking about the concepts. It takes doing the work to apply the frameworks and what you learn in these books to your own decision making. Um, I'm not a big fan of biographies of, you know, super famous, super wealthy entrepreneurs. I don't think my path has been similar at all to Elon Musk's. I don't think what Mark Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs did in the early days is applicable at all to what I do on a day-to-day basis. I mean, yes, you can pull away some points, but people put too much weight, way too much weight on, oh my God, look at these people who shot for the moon and look at how they won. I mean, there's significant survivorship bias there. For every Steve Jobs, there are hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs who tried that didn't make it. There's a tremendous survivorship bias. So let's dive right in. Talk about a couple books I really like that you should read. Um, Number one is Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. It's a phenomenal book about emotional intelligence and how every negotiation is based a lot less on logic than it is on emotions and on feelings and on the mindsets when you go into, you know, any management or leadership negotiation. And life is sales. Life is negotiations. This book will set you up really well to understand what really motivates people and what really matters when you're negotiating. Um, The E-Myth Revisited. Now, this is a book that gets tons of coverage. You probably see it everywhere. I do not like the method that he chose to write this book around the bakery and running a small bakery. I think that's a terrible business. And Sarah and her all around, all about pies. I mean, I think they're largely poor examples, but it it is the first stop for a beginner, in my opinion. It talks about how to think about building an actual business instead of providing a service and building a business that can grow without you. Now, this is a book that not very many people talk about, um, and it's about Dave Ramsey. It's by Dave Ramsey. It's called Entre Leadership. It's nonstop quality advice about how to build a business the right way. He doesn't preach about politics or religion. Dave Ramsey lays out what he did, how he did it, and how he grows what is now a multi-million dollar business around media. Great book. Um, the Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. This is a guy, Ryan Holiday, who studies and preaches Stoicism and a modern take on Stoicism, which is basically that, that split second between an event and your reaction to that event and how you handle yourself mentally and emotionally and how you handle your attitude when you're making really hard decisions and how the ego, which can get infl- inflated and you know, mess this up, especially as people who've had a little bit of success, how it can become the enemy and how the overconfidence and an inflated ego can create a lot of blind spots in your life. Built to Sell by John Warlow. And by the way, I'm reading all of these from sweatystartup.com slash book list. I have links to all of them. I have a little bit of, uh, it's an organized way to look at this. Sweatystartup.com slash book list. Um, Built to Sell by John Warlow. He came on my podcast. Great guy. And This book talks about how to get your life back once your business takes over, how to focus on doing what you're supposed to be doing well, and how to build a scalable business that can be sold. Building a business that can be sold is much different than building a profitable business 
that relies on you and you are the bottleneck inside your entire uh, company. Another book that I love by Eliahu Goldratt is called The Goal. This is a book that not very many, very many people talk about. It's in story format and it's about a, it's a fictional story, but it's about a guy who is, is tasked with managing a, where a, an industrial plant, a, a production facility. And it is all about removing the bottlenecks and figuring out what is holding up your life, what is holding up your business right now. And if you can focus on that and if you can remove those bottlenecks, you can win. Now let's go through two before we wrap this up. I want to make this a quick one. There's two books that have been massively influential. Well, let's do a real estate book first. This is called Risk Game. It's by Francis Greenberger. And it's, a, it's an awesome, entertaining read of a guy whose family came over, first generation Americans, Hungarian immigrants. They came over to the United States with a, with a book publishing business, a small sweaty startup. And Francis leveraged that, leveraged some of his dad's opportunity, some of his dad's wealth. And grew that company, created a massive amount of wealth, and then began buying and building, um, developing real estate in New York City. A phenomenal book about just thinking about the, the folks that built New York City, how different the real estate market was back in 1960, 1970, 1980, how they were giving New York City buildings away virtually for free because nobody could pay to maintain them. And the fact that New York City in the early 80s, late 70s was a war zone. Nobody wanted to live there. Um, it was basically on, on the verge of collapse. And these folks came in, found a way to finance these buildings, buy these buildings, sell them, and make bukus of money along the way. Phenomenal book. Now, two books that have had a massive influence on me that you've definitely heard of bo both. One is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I read this book every couple years. And The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I'll throw this audio book anytime I'm on a drive, put it on three times speed because I've already wrote it, read it multiple times or taken notes and I've tried to apply these things to my life. But this is just how to be a likable person. And the first one, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Car Carnegie. It's how to be a likable person. And the fact of the matter is, is that people hang out with and people do business with people they like. So if you are not likable, if you're not trustworthy, if you're not somebody who can relate to others, you're gonna have a really hard time making it in entrepreneurship. And so this, the book is phenomenal. A lot of very elementary things. It was written in the 60s or even earlier. Both these books were, but phenomenal books. Um, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. This is just talking about basic blocking and tackling decision-making principles when you are um, you know, taking initiative to, to make your life better. It's about being proactive, beginning with the end in mind, putting the first things first, thinking win-win when you're in a relationship, when you're in a negotiation with other people. Seek first to understand and then to understood to be understood. It's a lot of a lot of things that are just basic blocking and tackling of being a successful person, of being an effective person, being a productive person, being a good member of a team. Um, Flip the script by Oren Claff. He came on my podcast. You can search Sweaty Startup Oren Claff, a, a good episode. Um, and it's just how flipping the script when you're in a sales situation can work a lot better than the old school pushy sales techniques. It's about framing the situation so that customers want to sell you on working with them. And you can do that very easily. If you highlight all the negatives, if you manage expectations, those things can work really, really well. Um, another book, The Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandino. You can read this book in two hours and it's about the discipline and ability to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. If you are a salesperson, um, which all of us are salespeople, I highly recommend reading that book. One that really changed me is uh, textbook style. It's, it's 2020 Small Business Taxes by J.K. Lasser. I have not read the 2021 version. They've already come out with 2022. It's a, it's, it reads like a textbook, but for some reason I absorbed it quickly and it worked for me. This is a book on how basic tax fundamentals work and how, what you can write off, what you can deduct, how you can keep most of the things that you, most of the money that you make in a small business. This is, this book has probably saved me over three to $400,000 over the years and how I structure my deals, how I think about tax write-offs and how I think about um, reinvestment and getting the tax breaks around reinvestment. Um, got a couple more books on here. The Dip by Seth Godin. It's a short book. 75 pages. It only took me a few hours to read. It, it gets you thinking about 
you know, how to get through those times in life where you're on track, but you're not making progress. You know, at the beginning of starting a business, it's fun, right? You're building websites, you're getting your first customers, you're making massive leaps forward quickly. Very soon it becomes hard work and you enter that three-year period where you're just grinding. You're in the dip and you have to fight through it with dedication and determination. A phenomenal book. Loopholes of Real Estate by uh, Garrett Sutton. That's where I learned about, uh, the, uh, you know, taxes, appreciation, depreciation, um, cash flow, 1031 exchanges, capital gains. I like that book a lot. And then there's Titan by, it's about the life of John D. Rockefeller and Shoe Knight, uh, Shoe Dog, by, uh, about Phil Knight. Those books are more for entertainment purposes, but I enjoy them immensely. And again, I'm going to say one more time before we log off here. It's not about the book. It's not about the principles in the book. It's about doing the work to apply what's going on in that book to your life. If you're not doing anything, if you're sitting back reading all day, you have nothing to apply to. And it's not going to be helpful. If you are out doing, moving, shaking, selling, starting a business, whatever it is, that's when these books will impact you because you can use the frameworks, you can use the situations, you can use what you learn in these books to apply it to real life. It's like real life is your workbook, right? You're not going to learn anything unless you actually practice it. So get out and do something. This episode of The Sweaty Startup is brought to you by Jobber. And Jobber is a software that allows service business owners to run the back end of their business with ease. You can get quote request forms right inside the app on your website from customers. You can send out quotes to customers with a couple clicks of a button. You can set up all of your automatic email templates. You can send bills. You can get paid. You can stay organized. You can even schedule your employees. Now, Get Jobber is unbelievable. And my brother uses it to basically run his lawn care company without any admin work. And um, I just highly recommend this service. Visit GetJobber dot com slash sweaty for a 20% discount and a free trial. Um, I think if you run a service business, it is the best way to appear professional to the customers and also be incredibly efficient on your end. Now, one more time, it's getjobber.com slash sweaty.